Hello and welcome back to this bit of Honor Airborne Let's Play. This time I'm picking the BAR and the Garen as requested in the threat of a challenge. is on fire. Yeah, we better hurry before we go down. see the boats landing uh, on the beaches ahead and after multiple tries I decided to go for the trenches first because landing in the safe zone actually makes you attack the enemy line from the fertile position and with a Garand it's not the best weapon to clear trenches so I died oh, quite a lot. Here I'm taking fire while landing and all airborne units. I can pretty close here, but I'm safe. Command is instructed all units to see clear and secure the structure. Yeah, a lot of empty position. And uh, we'll be fixing a, a lot more uh, weapons to soldiers now. I'm using very, very cautiously. That MG could have easily killed me with a headshot. I'm really surprised again as, as fast as this. You can fire two shots in quick succession to drop any enemy. Some health because I really got knows in need. We're advancing toward the observation tower very carefully. As you can see the air is calling with German. Here I'm getting the expert commendation with a grenade launcher attachment because uh, I had quite a few tries which means that I could upgrade the uh, Garen twice with better accuracy. We have now three upgrades on the Garen. I'm sorry I had to do this off stream. I died quite a lot on this mission before getting uh, a pretty clear uh, run through. Grenade launcher can be useful since so it can allows you to carry eight more grenades, but the grenade thing to bounce a lot and can make you miss a target. Here I use the rider to know that there are three enemies behind those the bomb wires behind the Kubel wagon. Here again, the AI really loves to stay in your way when you throw a grenade or about to fire a shot. It can be really annoying. Finally, we can advance to the bunker itself. Another skill drop here. And uh, an MG emplacement that can really murder you. And do some room clearing. 
again, is not the best weapon for this. But as mentioned in the thread, that's the challenge. I've also acquired an upgrade for the uh, MK2 grenades, which allows me to carry, uh, I believe, three or five more grenades. Headshot takes, does the trick most of the time. And you can have the time to aim, that is. Here, take advantage of the uh, my, uh, faster reaction time than the uh, enemy to do some stabbing. Took me a few tries, though. Getting low on ammo, so I'm switching to the uh, Colt 45, and then, and here I show how to throw back a grenade with a kick. So melee action too, uh, Colt 9 You can see, but uh, Colt 1911 isn't the best weapon. It takes a few shots to drop enemies. If I can get a few more upgrades, I might do better. I took some more ammo for the Garen. You know I can shoot again. Here, an enemy pops palms right in front of me. Sometimes uh, you have some closeted enemy. Luckily, he didn't stand to shoot, he took cover instead of firing on me, so I had some time to reload. Some good headshots here. One objective down. Two to go. Now you can see the uh, all I fleet in the background and poor troopers dropping. Uh, in the rear. Actually, paratroopers never drop that close to Utah. Our main goal was to secure the uh, road to Cherbourg in the London Battle of St. Malaglis and also secure the causeway to the beaches. But I don't think they took on the uh, fences itself of the Atlantic Wall. The Ojo gets a bit weird here. I think it's an fraps issue. Another skill drop position. As you can see, if you attack this from the green smoke, when you land the green smoke, you have to attack this position, which is really solid defensive line for the Germans. Thankfully, we are in their rear, and it's much easier. It even seems that the defense is, is stronger on the rear than on the beaches, you'll see later. We have MGM placement, Bob wires. The yeah, really, those Germans really expected an air from the soul. Here there are two enemy uh, MG position, one in this little bunker here on the left, and one in the back may have spotted here. Again on a lie, stepped in my way and I was taking a shot. Good. This position can be pretty tough to attack if you get spotted by the MG. I haven't mentioned that I love the sound that makes when you pop a helmet. Yeah, I also think that the uh, stairs here stop the bullets. Oh. 
ton of crops coming out of the bunker, but a grenade takes care of most of them. A grenade explosion can make you deaf. Because it's close. Temporarily, of course. Another bunker station, and here I'm throwing a grenade on this MGM placement in the entrance. Somehow this German managed to survive a grenade, and then I really does a good job here turning it in my face. I'm the only one making bad throws. The challenge didn't uh, stop me from throwing grenades, so I'm abusing it a bit. Here, I think it's really useful as they can take an old three guys together quickly. VARs to clear the temptation. And the really main drawback of the VAR, especially in close quarters, is the short magazine, which has a little mostly contemplate. Only 20 rounds. It's a pretty good weapon otherwise. The only reason I'm showing it is because I have no ammo on the ram. And also because I wanted to. Since you have seen most uh, weapons, it behaves more like an assault rifle than a squad support weapon. You, you don't have any uh, a bipod with it coming with it. And another uh, sitting demolition charge for Travis. So Travis really does everything. Alright, two objectives down. Now, to deal with the armor. The radar. Come on, yeah, Travis took out the radar. He took out also the station bunker. He does everything. Here you can see uh, a bundle of the M18. Yep. What well, would be a Metal Thunder game without a Tiger 1 tank? We have to collect all the M18 bundles dropped out of the DZ before we can fire on it and take care of the Tiger. So we'll play a bit of hide and seek. Thankfully the Tiger team can't fire when you are up and I don't really have the time to grab it. Although he tends to target you if he can get the drop on you. So you wear the HA8mm shell can fuck up your day. See the turrets is following me, and I'm getting very close here. And finally, the M18 recall his rifle. Really, that was a bit too close. You could see the shell flying by. Now you do different damage if you fire on the treads, the rear, the side, or the front. The front will take a lot of rockets before you blow up. Well, actually, the recoil rifle isn't uh, doesn't fire a rocket, it fires some kind of shell, much like a rifle. I have a fire. I have the M18 was deployed for the airborne first. It uh, was the first weapon of its kind. It comes with a scope, which will you see me use very effectively. I also have a couple of grades on it, since I played this uh, mission a couple of times before getting on a good run through. Fire mission complete. All airborne units within the vicinity of Audouville. Assemble at coordinates Alpha 16 and clear remaining enemy troops from casemate. 
The uh, M18 Reckless Rifle didn't have the same armor penetration capacity as the Bazooka, but it was a solid weapon nonetheless, especially to clear an enemy in place. <laughs> Clearing the main cast made of a of a complex, and we'll have some close quarter action. And there are lots of Germans. You might have noticed by now, all the light models have only one stripe, that means they are all PFCs and there are no uh, in insignias for sergeants, scout posts, or even uh, officers. Again, the M1 isn't the best weapon to attack. You have to take it very slowly here. Get it was uh, a little bit more aggressive. It could really uh, mess up the player's day. Another grenade kick. Fed up with this. I think it's time we brought out the big guns. Don't you think? Yep. Room clearing. We have an M18 recoilist rifle. Bet you didn't expect that. It's a one hit weapon, and you don't have to aim for the head. I took up three guys with that shot. That was a bit close, but there's some help nearby. Let's clear up the room. Eat that. <laughs> you told me I could use explosive and anti-tank weapon. So uh, I'm still within the um, rules of the challenge. Guess the Navy gets credit for that kill, huh? It's an officer. You gotta get to those pillboxes before more men get onto the beaches! But move slow and use cover! Take them one at a time! Wait, we're going down there? Into the trenches? Of course we are! We're airborne! <laughs> Well, we might be airborne, but I'm not a suicide risk. So let's clear this out the heavy way. Reports indicate heavy casualties in the gun positions on the cliff. We are now facing some uh, SS officer using the STG-44. And you might have also noticed that when you have a condition award, it goes in slow motion, and you have actually unlimited ammo during this time. Yup. 
I wish you could have a recall this rifle all the time when I go around. Yeah, but I got a recon this rifle. Meet my big friend. Some people think picking out smart men. Maybe. Maybe. But I've yet to meet someone that can outsmart me. Be it me to you. Fun with the regular strap that comes to an end. There's no way to get more ammo for it. Deadly, I know. You could say the recall this is actually the best weapon in the game. I actually think that grenade went out of the window opening. Well, as now we are only facing as the uh, regular German infantry is much less common. Some melee action here. That was also a bit. Well, those both they came one at a time, so I had time to switch one by one. Down we go, into the belly of a beast. One kill with the one man. And you can see some uh, light infantry on the beach here. Not a big assault though. We are actually at whip at whipping and placing eight uh, near the other the battery. Which was uh, better without any heavy weapons we can take on any allied ship. It was supposed to find 75mm and 15mm guns. So no threat for the uh, allied invasion. Awesome power of the command. Drawn in a means five feet into the air. You can fit on ammo, so we use the four point five. So this accuracy is really in stone ball here. Actually for three or four slot heads here, the enemy didn't drop. Style. I'll do a quick draw. Right behind you! 
Colonel Scott Webb, commanding officer. This is the after-action report for Operation Neptune, June 6th, 1944. Dropped behind enemy lines at dawn, suffered heavy losses, but took all objectives. After Come securing on! the main battery, we pushed toward Utah, cleared all enemy gun positions. Allied forces now moving inland from the beaches. I have no doubt that history will remember the airborne on this day. Your acts of courage will be revered for generations to come. Thank you for watching, and a 5 stars out of 5 stars score. Because I did the mission a few times. So all the XP I brought to carry to the line. Stats and badges, probably weapons. I'll be seeing you next time.